Hey everybody, this is the tutorial for you if you love modern flower arrangements. If you're one of those people who don't like the fluffy and too many flowers and you just want it done quickly and you want it to look really good, I have got an exquisite feature to design for you that you can put in the foyer of your house, in the entrance hall, you can put it in your lounge. It's really simple, you're gonna love it. And you'll see that I've got three elements only and three glass vases here. You'll notice that I've chosen vases that are slightly taller, shorter and shortest. This creates what I always refer to in floristry as rhythm. And so the different heights really start creating a movement for you in your design and that's what it's about. Sometimes it's hard to also choose colour and I know my students when I teach they often say to me, Jill, the hardest part for me is trying to decide what to put together with what and one of the things I wanted to show you today is that you can actually let flowers lead you. All you have to do is start off with one thing that you love and this is an exquisite orchid. It's called a Cymbidium orchid but have a look at the colours that are in it and really that's all you need to do. So there's this incredibly vibrant cerise, there's a slight creamy yellow and then there's green. And so you'll see that I've just bought flowers that are the same to the table. Yellow, these are chrysanthemums, and this is called a stilby. Have a look at this punchy maroon and how when you put it next to the maroon of this orchid, it's like, oh hello, it's a match made in heaven. One of the other things I want to speak about is how each of these elements of my floral design that I'm going to do, the stilby, the cymbidium, and the chrysanthemum are completely different in their form. So how they show up, how they represent. This one is round and it has many little petals all going to a center point. This one is long and line-like and it has lots of little flowers sheathed up it and it's got a frivolity to it. And this one is kind of conical towards the top. So the contrast between these three forms that I'm using in this design is what we call high and that makes for an intriguing design and specifically in this modern kind of styling that's what you look for. So you're going to start off by preparing your containers and like I said honestly this is one of the easiest design ideas that you can do and it doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of money, thank goodness because flowers are expensive and you'll really get a great impact design. So we'll start off by just adding some water and you just put a tiny bit of water into each of the vases. Now, most people think to themselves, oh, I've got cylinder vases at home, I better go and find a flower that's super long like a gladioli or some sticks because I need like, long things to put inside a cylinder vase. No, 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 not anymore because what we're going to do is we're going to create a flower arrangement inside the vase and this is called working in the virtual space. So the virtual space is the space the container occupies and everything in it. Nice and easy, but you've got to, if you're going to do this, really bring my focus down into the base of these vases so that you pull me in and then you flowers bring me up through the vase space and to do that we use leaves and leaves like aspidistra leaves which is this big guy dracaena leaves okay dracaena i love this one that lime green lick through the center look how cool it looks with the orchid it's like lime lime and then the last one we're going to use is this little guy which is called leary grass check it how cool it is it twists and turns and bends and you can have so much fun with it then, sometimes what happens with leaves is they get damaged or they get some spray residue on them. If you have a, had a rain in your garden, you'll find that they can be a little dusty and dirty. Yes, and the truth is all these flowers grow in your garden, so you can plant them, I mean these leaves, and use them. So that's another good thing about this design. And then there's this, so it's called leaf shine, and it just brings such a, a sort of liveliness to your leaves if they're looking a little dull. Look at the difference now between that leaf and then a little bit of leaf shine you got it. it has quite a strong odor but look what it does it's wonderful nice shiny leaves and then we'll start off with the biggest leaf in the biggest container the second biggest leaf in the second biggest container and the smallest little leaves in the smallest container and that's matching 
size to get good transition. We're going to have to twist this aspidistra leaf into the bottom of that vase. So you'll notice it starts to offer resistance here where the centre stem becomes quite thick. So cut that away to facilitate this twirling motion that we're going to do. And you just give it a bit of a twirl, hold it in the hand, and then you need nice long arms for this, and you drop it in. So that's basing number one. Number two. And lastly, so the Liriope leaves usually have a bit of a dirty edge to them because of how they grow. You get rid of that and then Turn the one opposite, one grouping of it opposite the other so that you have some pointy pieces at the side where there's some straight edges. Okay, that just makes it a little bit more funky. And then you can really twist this in your hand. Let's just cut away some of these that are really hard to bend because they're a bit too thick. Catch those, and then we'll pop that in there. And you get a really great effect. Okay, now the magic is adding the flowers, and we'll start with this huge and beautiful orchid. Pop it right in the middle of this vase. So we'll measure on the outside edge so that you don't cut it too short. You want to get the whole full length of this flower inside the vase. So it will hit the base of the vase at about that point. And very carefully place it in. Look at that. And what's so nice about this is the flower actually lasts a lot longer inside of the vessel because it doesn't get all the wind and the draft and the heat. So this is a wonderful way to really highlight an orchid, but that's one part of the design. The second part is that we're going to use these croissants and stagger them up. One at a time. A little bit more. taking all the leaves off so that you don't have too much busyness inside the vase because the whole idea about this kind of styling is that it's very minimal. So you see me just measuring and measuring and that's because in order for this to become a perfectly balanced design, the distance between the flower heads has to be exactly the same for each one that you keep adding. So if you were doing three, like I'm going to do in this, you want to make sure that you match that spacing perfectly. I think that's about right, let's see. Always make it a bit longer if you're not sure, because it's much easier. Well, it's, there's only one way. You can only cut a stem shorter, you can't cut it longer. So if you're not sure, rather leave it a little bit long, and then you can do what I'm doing and measure it out. And now you can see the distance is too great. Okay, we needed a little bit less, so I think my first cut point was spot on. So that's about right, and now we're starting to create a feature design where there are three elements and it's all going to come together when I finally add this little astilbe. Astilbe, just so sweet and so soft and it really has this wonderful, I almost want to say vintagey kind of a, a feeling to it, but 
and yet it can be used in a very modern way, like I'm going to do now. And there you have it, a design that you can put in your home that is powerful and I think extremely cool and very modern.